Good afternoon FlossTube, it is Sunday the 4th of October. I'm Caroline in Leeds in West Yorkshire in the UK and I am back for video number 13 I believe. Um, I hadn't intended it for it to be so long between my videos, I recorded my last one sort of beginning to mid-July, um, but August got busy and we were doing some work on the house at weekends, which meant that um, I didn't really have a quiet time to record. Um, we're laying some new floor, hardwood flooring in the attic and my husband has uh, been busy at that, but the back, a background of banging and soaring didn't lend itself for a, for the, for great audio quality for a video. Um, and I'm back at work actually on site now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I work in a college. So um, once we reopened to students, I had to go back into the office, which of course is dramatically cut into my crafting time as I'm now commuting again. Um, thank you if you are a returning viewer, thank you very much. Um, it's nice to see you again. I'm very grateful for anyone who subscribes, leaves me comments or likes. If you're new here, you're very welcome. Hope you like what you see and you want to hang around. Um, if you want to subscribe, that's feel very free to do so, but um, it's entirely up to you. I can be found around the internet or mostly on Instagram and Twitter. My Instagram handle is the handle on both of those is the same. It's at Caroline A. Kemp and Caroline is spelled with a K. Um, show notes for this episode will be on my blog, which is carolinescorner.blogspot.com. Um, I actually have a fully finished FFO, fully finished object for you to show you. I had actually finished this. Um, it was fully finished at my last video, but I forgot to show you it. And with, given I did a full run through of my whips, I didn't think, um, I didn't, I thought I'd just leave it for this one. So, my fully finished object is Forget Me Not Sampler by, with thy, Brenda Gervais, with thy needle and thread. It's, um, I found it. At the beginning of this year, having finished the stitching at the end of last year, this is a pre-made frame that I picked up in um, TK Maxx. Um, I was looking for one of these sort of Indian style mouldings because I thought that would go with it very, very well. So very pleased to have that finished. It's on the wall and uh, I, it's in my bedroom so I get to look at it all the time, which is nice. Okay, so that's one or out of the finished finished objects drawer onto the wall. And speaking of finished objects, I actually have a couple. Um, it's also, so the first one is the sampler of stitching for my silver wedding. It was my silver wedding in August. So I decided to stitch um, Emblem of Love by With My With Thy Needle, Ellen Chester. So it's with my needle. Um, this is stitched on 32 count vintage Luna from Lakeside Linens, which having been watching a bit of Brenda and Laura, I gather is still in production, so you can still get it. Um, and using and dyed silk, a silk conversion from Vicky Clayton, who I gather has also restarted dyeing, which is excellent news. Um, her silks are lovely to work with. So very, very pleased with how that this has come out. I need to get this one framed now and on the wall as well. So, started this in sub, sample of September last year, so it took just under a calendar year so, for me to stitch it, um, which, and mostly it got worked on this year um, because I think I only got the little flower done when I started it and then when I picked it back up this year and I've got everything else finished. 
very, very pleased with how that, this one has turned out. Um, my husband likes it as well, which is always good. Now, when I went through my whips last time for my video, I ended up having this real urge to work on some of them. Um, and I had several that were quite, are quite close to being finished. Um, so I decided to take, um, that for the, it is Kismet Stitches, Diana's birthday cell, the Kismet in July cell, I would pull pomegranate sand her out because I didn't have much left to do and get it finished. I think all I had to do was finish the tree and the snowflakes down the side. I don't know if you can see them because they do blend kind of into the fabric quite. I'm very very pleased to have got this one finished and off the pile. Um, this is stitched on 32 36 count light, vintage light exemplar from Lakeside Linens using the call for um, classic colour works thread and the design is Pomegranate Santa by Plum Street Samplers. I've got the um, Lady Dot Chenille so we'll be finishing this one as a pillow eventually uh, for the minute it's on the pile waiting to be finished but again very very pleased that I dug that out and got it finished so yeah so two finishes reasonably sized pieces as well um this has been on the go for a couple of years because I was just working on it for Santa Sundays on Instagram but um it got put down really this year when I decided to focus on finishing emblem of love so um but yes very glad to also have that one done so on to whips first whip i've been really concentrating on is of course dorothy walpole and i am very very pleased with the progress i've made on dorothy and um, i have the bottom and finished the border. I think last time you saw this, let me move my needle minder and thread, I was working on this big, finishing off this big spray of flowers. So I finished that in July, then August no, I finished that in August. September, I finished all the border. I just, for sampler September, I just powered through and got the border done. And so I'm now working on this um, eyelet stitch section down the bottom for October. And then I will do the remaining little flower sprays in November, and then she will be done almost six years after I started her. See if I can get her all in. I don't think I can. I think she's too big and I don't have enough room. So yeah, so there we go. But I am very, very much looking forward to getting Dorothy off the scroll frame and up on the wall. <laughs> I'm stitching her on more like side linen this is 40 count pearl barley um, on the Italian linen base, which I have no idea if they do anymore. I've, I, had it, I had it in my stash, it predates my kids. I've had it that long, um, using the call for DMC. And the chat is by the Scarlet Letter. So another whip that's seen a fair bit of progress is my C.A. Wells three-sided reticule, which was a class I took with Susan and Sarah Albury of Hanging by a Thread when C.A. used to come over to the UK and teach many years ago. This class was took in 2006, I believe. I have now finished 
can't remember where I was last time. I finished two. I have finished two of the side panels and two of the little pincushion panels. That's one. And there's two. So I only have two more, one more panel to go. So next time that gets picked up, I will finish all the reticule pieces. I've got it. I've got it outlined and I've got I've done all the inside, I've just got to finish that and the other little tin cushion. Um, there's a companion piece that goes with it, which is to line a box. So I shall do the stitching for that as well before I finish it. But um, as always with one of CA's pieces, once you actually get cracking, there isn't actually a huge, it's, you know, once you've got all your outlining done, the actually the filling in of the panels and stuff never takes that long once you get down to it. Um, I'm not sure on the linen or the threads because CA by that point CA just wasn't telling us what she was using. I think that's why the Soir Cristal and the Over Dye is a water lilies but I could be wrong um, and I don't think she's teaching anymore so I can't ask her. She seems to have vanished off the scene altogether. Um, which is a shame because she had some lovely pieces. But uh, I'm pleased I've got some progress in on that one. It's been sat, sat in the, uh, sat in my whip pile for far too long. The next whip I have to show you got worked on in August and September. And that is Jane Marshall. I bought this, it's now, it's available as a little gem off the Hands Across the Sea website, but when I bought it, I bought it as the fundraiser for the Australian bushfires. <coughs> Pardon me, I had a cold for the last few weeks, it's the only downside of being back in college. Um, so I worked on this for two cells. I worked on this for Michelle of Cozy Egg's birthday cell. Um, because she invited everyone who'd got her hands across the sea chart to join her. She was working on Anton Umfendel. Um, so I decided I could make most progress. I was away on holiday it, when I was working on this one in August and I got down to the name done because this is stitched on a 32 count days gone by even weave which made it a nice one to take away on holiday when I wasn't quite sure what the lighting arrangements would be and whether I'd be able to use my magnifier and stuff like that. Um, and then I also worked on it for Sampler September. Um, didn't get a huge amount of time uh, done because obviously with being back at work I wasn't stitching anything like as much as I was. Um, it's been quite exhausting. Um, or even more exhausting than the start of term normally is. Um, so I mostly was working on this band here um, and have got it done. So I've one more to go, the pretty much full coverage band at the bottom. Um, so I'm not sure when she, Jane is next going to come out, but um, very pleased with the progress I've made on her this year. I started her back in February when the um, when the chart was released. I so say I'm, I'm stitching her on some days gone by even weave 32 count that I had in my stash and I converted the colours to Gloriana silks again from all from my stash so I didn't need to uh, so I could get started quickly without having to wait to uh, buy, buy supplies and I'm very pleased with how she's coming out as well. The only other whip I worked on was at the end of August, we went away for a short break camping. So I decided to take Heart in Hand's Springbird with me because that lent itself to um, stitching in the tent. And got a bit more progress on it. I finished the bird altogether. I think I um, 
I was on the tail and I hadn't filled in its little wings at that point. So it's growing slowly. And again, once once this once I get back to this one, it will go quite quickly, I think. Although the, the egg is pretty solid stitching. Um, I'm using the Call Full Colours, the Mix of Weeks Dye Works and um, Gentle Art sampler threads on this one. I say so got a couple of days, two or three days when we were we were away camping. Um, so it makes it quite, they, they, these designs are quite good for stitching in a, stitching in a tent of the morning. So I'm very pleased to see progress on some stuff that's not been out of the whip pile for a while. And I started Spring Bird last year in February, I think. Um, so so long overdue getting finished. So those are the whips I've worked on. So I've mostly been concentrating on Dorothy Walpole just because I want to get her done once I've finished um, Emblem of Love. Um, but I do have my first of the month starts to share with you. In August, I decided to stitch Sunflower Summer from Shepherd's Bush, which is a kit I've had in my stash a long time. I've done the spring one in this series because it's time I got the rest done and then I can hopefully get them finished at some point get them up on a seasonal display. I made a reasonable start on the sampler header, got the pudgy in there and made a start on the sunflowers um, which I'm quite happy about. Um, I can't remember what the kit linen is but it's um, Olive Vera Soir silks. Um, Shepherd's bush like. My new start for sampler September was the drawn threads, the An Open Heart. Again, I've had this in my stash since it came out in about 2003. Um, waiting, kitted up and waiting to go. So I decided this year was the year to go for it made a small small start on the heart at the top um, there we go I'm using the call for needlepoint silks um, and I think the linen um, I don't think it's the call for linen. I have a feeling this is elegant bean, but I might be wrong. Um, because I think elegant stitch started dyeing linen for this, for this design, or maybe another one, but the kit came from elegant stitch, so it might be their linen or it might be the cafe au lait. But I know Lois was doing her own linen for this. Yeah, the chart is copyright 2002, gives you an idea of how long I've had it. And I think I got the kit, it was a gift from a friend to join in a sti online stitch along, which never happened because I've got the instructions for the stitch along, save with the chart. I was probably working on something else. And I need, at that time I had another big drawn thread sampler in my, uh, in my stand, in my whip pile. Then we're on to October. And I pulled Autumn Acorn by Kelmscott Designs out of the kit drawer. Um, I'm stitching it on a small part piece of 40 count pearl barley that was left over from one of the offcuts from Dorothy Walpole. And I'm using some Gloriana Silk in Colourway Jerricanda to um to stitch it when i get going with this one it won't really take me very long that was under an hour's work on the first so that's where i'm up to in my whips and uh, new starts 
Now there has of course been a little bit of shopping over the last three months. First thing I have to show you is a thread drop I got. Um, this came from an Etsy seller called Beehive Needleworks or Needlework from the Beehive, I can't remember. Um, she doesn't always have stuff in her shop, I think it comes and goes, but very pleased with that one. Um, it's nice to find suppliers in the UK, especially at the moment where um, international posts can be a bit hit and miss. And uh, also means you don't get totally clobbered for customs charges, which is a real pain um, if you order overseas these days. Um, and there may have been a couple of um, Hands Across the Sea samplers charts. I had to get the Queen of the May. I don't think I showed this one on my last video, Mary Carter, um, because she's just gorgeous. And when it was my birthday in September, well, my daughter bought me Mary Ann Diapa which was the new release that came again. She's absolutely gorgeous. And then I caught up with some old charts that I missed when I couldn't buy stash at the time. Some Scarlet House, Strawberry House. Um, a newbie from one of this year's Nashville releases, Coffee First, which if you, anyone who knows me knows, so you don't function without coffee, by Brenda Gervais. And a chart by Kathy Barrick, Good Intentions, just because I love the verse on this. I myself am entirely made of flaws stitched together with good intentions. And then this month I picked up the latest ornament edition. I know some people don't, are always fairly critical of it, but I, you know, it's ornaments. Um, these, these days it tends to be my kids picking the ornaments out. So actually they, they like, um, they have quite different tastes to me, so it works. And it's also a good way of finding out new designers, otherwise I get stuck in a rut with the same old, same old. Um, again, another oldie but goodie sampler hill from Brenda Gervais, which has been on my wish list for yonks. Along with Plum Street samplers, The Pink House, which I wanted to stitch since I think it was Carol finished it. <laughs> Um, salt box stitcher and then another thing I have been doing um, is kicking up stuff to start next year I figure with the supply chain issues around getting threads and stuff if I start start now I've got a chance of getting getting everything I need before I want to rather than wait until I'm ready to start the start the chart um, especially when it comes to over dyed threads so the last couple you know, I've not struck too many problems in getting hold of stuff. Um, just stuff is, you know, it might take a two or three um, orders just to get everything I need, um, have everything I need in stock. So one of the charts I'm going to start next year is a Brenda Gervais chart. It is Birds of a Feather, which was a mystery sampler of... Um, can't remember when it was a mystery sample I'd have to have a look um, but I bought it at the time and it's been sat there ever since and I know it's hard to find now um, so I thought I need to get that stitch so I got oops I got all the week's dye works and then I will have a throwing them all over the place um, I will have a now I've got the threads I will go through my fabric stash and see what if I've got a, if I need to order fabric I should be able to find something I've quite a large stash of 32 count fabric and I think the model called 30 count so I should 
probably be able to find something that will suit, but I wanted to get the threads first. Next one I'm going to stitch is Clara Ellen from Blackbird Designs, which was part of the Anniversaries of the Heart. I'm not planning on doing the whole series, but I had to get this one because Clara Ellen is my great grandmother's name. Now I own her mother's sampler, um, Mary Ellen. So I wanted to stitch Clara Ellen to go alongside it. And so I've picked up the classic colour works and gentle art that it calls for. Oh, I've them in the bag this time. The nice muted colours. And again, I will go through my fabric stash and see what I've got. And um, now I've got the threads and see whether I need to order one. And then because it was my birthday last month and I got a bit of birthday money, I bought the silks for Rachel Howells, which is going to be my big sample start next year. Um, I had a handful of the needlepoint silks, but then I decided, um, so I decided to splash out. Um, so I'm not really, normally I'd spend my birthday money at Yarndale, but obviously with everything, the current unpleasantness, Yarndale wasn't happening as such. So West End embroidery to the, um, so I had a very pleasant time picking threads, silks off the West End embroidery site. I love, love these reds. So yes, I'm not sure when I'll get, this one I will need to order fabric for because I know I haven't got any 40 count the right colour. So, and then the last silks I bought was another skein of rosewood from Gloriana because I'm planning on starting the Sampler Coves Quaker Hussif next year and I do have some rosewood but I don't have a full skein so I thought I'd get another one just just in case I needed it. So there you have it. So I'm going to pause the video now and move all the cross stitch stuff and then get the knitting and see how we go. Right, ah, I'm back um, with my knitting and a very little bit of quilting. Um, right, since we, my last video, I have actually managed to finish a couple of things off. The first thing I finished was the cardigan for my daughter, which I wasn't that far away from last time you saw it. Um, it's the Sinister Cattigan by Marna Gilligan. Um, and here it is. It has actually been worn. Um, I couldn't prize it off my daughter for a long time, so it's actually she's not wanting it washing now, so I thought I'd uh, grab it and show it off first. Um, love knitting this one actually, it knit up really really well. This It's knit in Kinross 4ply by We Country Yarns and I'm using granite is the grey, quartz is the white and orchid is the pink. The buttons came from Duttons for Buttons the local button shop and um, she requested the peeking cat coming out of the pocket as well she absolutely loves it i will put in i'll try and insert a photo of her wearing it um, very pleased that that is finished and it still fits her um, i started this last september so not bad to knit it in about nine months i think it took me to knit this one it was um to actually knit up remarkably quickly, all things being equal. So, um, yeah, I think it was having those um, judgy little cats watching me. So, you know, you have to, you just have to crack on because you just know that they're going to gang up on you if you don't. And I say, she's very, very happy with it. And I couldn't prize it off her shoulders in August. <laughs> Um, so I better get it washed now so she can wear it again. The other thing I have finished but isn't fully finished yet is my 
impressionist shawl that Helen Stewart did as a make along and I'm sorry for the pitch quality but my printer was running out of ink when I printed the pattern. Um, I haven't sewn in the ends and I haven't blocked it yet um, because as I mentioned we're doing some work on the attic and that's where I block my needlework. It's going to be a little while before I can get it blocked but here we are, here is the finished shawl. I cast it off last weekend. It is knit in Rivernet's BFL 4-ply. The top colour is Impressionist, which obviously it's an Impressionist shawl. I had to use a colourway called Impressionist. The dark green there is Mermaid. And the darkest colour is called Cairn, which is a grey. And they've all got bits of the same green all the way through it. I'm really pleased with how this is looking so far and I am really looking forward to getting it blocked um, to, uh, and to be able to wear it. I think it's looking absolutely fabulous so far and that's before I block it. So it's going to be a beautiful shawl to wear. There we go. So as I say, I cast that one off last weekend. So uh, um, I had a stinking cold, so I spent a lot of time in bed doing the Pico cast off, which is, let's see, quite literally spent the whole three, three days doing the cast off. So I've not decided what I'm going to replace I think I might finish my socks in instead of casting on another shawl for the minute but I'll show you the co sh socks in a minute um, after I finish the um, cardigan a sinister cardigan I decided to cast on a cardigan for myself I'd noticed flicking through this lovely book from Carrie Westerman called This Thing of Paper a shawl in there um, that I actually had enough yarn in my stash for. It is the Incuba cardigan. Let me give you, show you a, see if I get a picture of it. Without showing the pattern, there we go. It's Carrie mo modelling it beautifully, which is a crop cardigan with crop sleeves and some cable detailing, detailing it. And I had a packet of West Yorkshire Spinners BFL DK, and it calls for DK. Um, I was actually a little surprised and worried when I first cast this on, because when I swatched, I got gauge first time. I never get gauge first time. My gauge is always too loose, and I have to adjust the pattern accordingly. Um, but I hit it straight away. I, in fact, I had to knit multiple gauge swatches to make sure I was not just making this up because you know, you just know that's going to bite you otherwise. But there we go. But it was right, I was getting gauge. I was most surprised about this. So I've been working on this and since sort of, oh, since all. August and after knitting um, a four ply cardigan I'm really pleased with how quickly this is knitting up. I am I knit in the round bottom up so I have got up to dividing for the for the sleeves and I am doing the arm I've just finished the armhole shaping on the back and I am working my way up the back um yeah and with it being cropped it's knitting up beautifully quickly um so yes so really pleased with how that's that's going at the moment there we go 
and that this cardigan is going to be for me. So I mentioned my socks, which I think I will finish off. I'm doing the Shell Cottage socks from the Sock Society. I think it was the Sock Society number three, two or three. Um, two, I think, actually, last year's. Um, by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. I have one sock done. As you can tell, they're not really in Helen Stewart colours. This colourway is called Dark Morris um, and is by The Knitting Goddess. And it was a one of her Back to the Discworld Club yarns from, two, I think it was 2016. It's been sat in my stash. Um, so I got one sock finished, which I think you've seen before. And I am almost at the heel shaping on sock number two. So I think rather than casting on, because I, this is always, sock knitting's always been my my waiting around for kids to do swimming, dancing, whatever, lessons, knitting. And obviously they're not doing any of that at the moment. So um, I'm not really getting much knitting time to knit. So the, these these are knitting quite up quite slowly. Again, I cast these on back in September last year. So these have been on the needles for a year. So. I'm going to, um, I think, finish these off before I cast on another shawl. Um, so that's the state of the knitting at the moment. Quite pleased with what I've got done. Um, and I have recently managed to find a bit more time to do a little bit of quilting. Um, I mentioned before I signed up for a mystery quilt through the Modern Quilt Club, run by my friend Lisa. Um, and it's a mystery pattern by Sheila Christensen, who's at Mystery Quilter on Instagram. I can't remember the fabric lines that Lisa's using, but this is clue number one that I've got finished. I mean, I'd had hoped to be quite a bit further on with my quilt quilting but then of course like everybody I've been making masks and such like and juggling the kids because over the summer we made a point of trying to get out as much as possible because in case we get locked down again which is looking increasingly likely because we're into local lockdown here now um so yeah so I've finished four of these blocks um, and I made a start on block number two, um, blocks, it's clue two of the, the um, quilt. We'll see, because we're actually, I'm due to get my last box next month. Um, so yeah, no, I didn't manage to stay, stay up on that, but uh, it's nice to see it starting to come together. So that's all I've got for you this week. It, um, wasn't quite as long as I thought it might be um, so I'm hoping to record again before the at the end of October um, so my plans in October stitching wise it's finished that um, eyelet section on Dorothy and then because for it's dark October stitching I think I will it's not going to be a particularly dark piece but I'm going to pull happy Halloween by the drawn thread that I started last year out and work some more on that and then see where we are. See if that take that I suspect that will take I will be that will take me up to the end of October. I'd be very surprised if I managed to finish it, but it'd be nice to get a chunk of progress in on it. Um and then keep going with my knitting, see if I can I'll certainly get the back finished on my cardigan and hopefully at least one of the fronts. Um so yeah, I'm very pleased. It's nice to be knitting in double knit again after knitting in four ply. Um, and then we'll see with the sock and whether I, I succumb to the siren call of another shawl. Um, so, um, and keep going with my mystery quilt, obviously, and see if I can get another clue, clue two finish before I record again. Um, so yeah, that's all for I've got for you. So I hope you will take care. Um, 
wear your masks and wash your hands and do all and keep your distance. I know it's really difficult. I really struggle with the keeping distance thing, um, but we need to do it. Um, so we're back here, here in Leeds, we're back in a local lockdown. Um, we're not allowed to have people around the house or meet people in our gardens. We're not, we, we're not being specifically banned from meeting people outside in the parks and stuff, but it's recommended we don't. So I'm basically just going to work, um, which to be quite frankly, exposes me to far too many people. Um, because it's a college and you can't run a college. Ours is quite a practical department and you can't teach practical skills online easily. Um, so we have full, full classes and full workshops. So um, in order to limit my exposure to other people, I don't do anything other than go to work. Um, and, but that means plenty more stitching time, I guess. Um, so stay safe everyone and I shall see you all next time. Bye.